Friends of Entrepreneurial Insights, this time we are in San Jose. It's very close to the German Oktoberfest and that's why we are interviewing a German entrepreneur here in the Silicon Valley. Martin from Skytree, who are you and what do you do? Hi, thanks Martin, thanks for having me. I'm Martin Hack, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Skytree. Uh, we're a machine learning company in the big data space and uh, we are focusing on uh, making predictions. Great. I mean, you have great weather here, so what would be your p prediction for the, n uh, for the next days? Well, since it's California, it's going to be nice because we don't really have to worry about that. Uh, we have about 240 Sundays here, so uh, in a way, uh, nothing to worry about on that front. Great. How did you come up with this idea of Skytree? Yeah, so eventually, uh, this is my, my, um, my, my first company where I was the founder. I did a couple of uh, startups in the past, worked at big companies over the last uh, 25 years. Uh, started out in Europe and then came to the US uh, 15 years ago. And um, about three or four years ago, I started to see there is uh, more and more need of big data. That was even before people ta started talking about big data. And, uh, but really, the insights, how do we get the insights from all this data that's out there? It was pretty clear that there was still a missing link, essentially. And uh, um, a close friend of mine, Alex Gray, which I've known for 15 years, uh, we stayed in touch over the years. He was a professor of machine learning at Georgia Tech. Uh, we got together about once a year, and we started talking about four or five years ago, well, what would a company look like, uh, what could we use it, and we saw a lot of really Im important applications for that. And then ultimately, uh, we, started to to, we decided to take the plunge and uh, start a company, and it was about three and a half years ago. Great. Can you briefly explain what Skytree really does? Sure, so we're essentially an uh, uh, enterprise uh, software company. Uh, we are uh, selling software in the cloud and on the premise uh, for um, doing massive scale uh, machine learning on big data. So uh, that could be anything from making a predictions, making recommendations, finding outliers, finding patterns, uh, those are the, the usual use cases where people use machine learning for it. We provide the software and the services for, for our customers for that. Mm -hmm. And do you also have third-party um, applications that you are selling on your platform, or is it all, everything developed by yourself? Everything is uh, by Skytree. Uh, we, we work with a lot of the Hadoop partners out there, so we work very closely with the three big Hadoop lenders. They're all partners and friends of ours. Uh, it's very much a big data ecosystem nowadays. It's very, very hard to do it for one vendor alone. And so we have a very good partner system out there and the Hadoop uh, vendors are, 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 are very near and dear to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you have uh, a technology developed that you can apply to several problems or did you adjust the, those kind of technology and develop sing singular products? Yeah, so essentially it's a, it's a platform, so there are multiple use cases for that with what we call a vertical mm -hmm. approach. So some of those areas are, for example, in financial services, uh, if you think about fraud detection and fraud prevention, that's a big use case. Another one would be around risk scoring, credit scoring, and another one would be around marketing and targeting, so who should we essentially market to? Those are uh, very common ones. Uh, other ones are uh, around what we call predictive maintenance, uh, predicting when a certain part is about to fail. Think about cars, think about energy transformers, think about utility, uh, sometimes multi-million dollar units, if you can predict something before it fails, that's a great um, right. asset to have at, at their disposal. So those are the things we're, we're working on with our customers. And when you started the company, how was your go-to-market strategy? So how did you try to acquire some customers? Did you start with one product and then just acquire a specific subset of the customer that you have currently, or how did it work? So for us, we were kind of in a, in a, in a fortunate position because we were still in stealth mode. Uh, we had no, f no website, no phone number, but we had customers. Why? So how did that happen? Uh, there was such a demand for the technology that people through rather obscure channels found out about us and said, oh, we want to work with you and, and can, you, can you come in and help us? So those verticals are the ones I already mentioned, um, financial services, uh, retail, insurance companies. And so the, the go-to-market was kind of already planned out for us without even us doing anything. And obviously we enforced that and we, we then you know, grew the, the, the customer base in those verticals. But ultimately it was, um, you know, it wasn't really a solution trying to find a market. The market was already there and asked, okay, can you help us? So, and 
with the big data environment exploding in most of these customers, and these are all global 2,000 customers. Mm -hmm. So these are the biggest brands, the biggest companies out there who have essentially the need to, to do those kind of computation analytics. And so for us, it was a, a perfect match, so to speak, because we, we had something that they wanted, and for us, we then you know, focused and tailored the offering uh, around those, those kind of applications. And did you get to know th these kind of first-time customers before you started, or uh, or did you just uh, happen by accidentally getting to know them? I think it's a it was both essential. I mean, some of it came through networking where we knew okay. I mean, there's only a limited number of customers that would would, would buy that initially, and we knew you know in the global 2000 list there are you know the 50 biggest banks, the the 50 biggest investment banks, the mm -hmm. 50 biggest retail banks, and so on. So we knew who they were. And it's a rather close community at that point. And then you would ask for introductions, or we already knew somebody there. So, uh, so, and then usually you get a snowball effect or the net effect. And then ultimately, you know, if, if number one in that industry is using your product, number two and three and four right. probably wants to use it very, very quickly thereafter because they realize they're, they're missing out in the market. Mm -hmm. In this B2B market segment, uh, uh, one of the major problems is really identifying <coughs> the key decision maker. How did you uh, identify those people? I think that's ultimately, you know, the challenge of, of, of any kind of sales environment. Enterprise sales is a um, somewhat a combination of art and science to a certain degree, and you just have to essentially figure out who's the economical buyer, who's the technical decision maker, and that might vary. There, there is not, not one size fits all. It's not always the same person who makes the decision. It could be literally across the board, and, and in some organizations, you might have five people who have to say yes before there is a purchasing decision. So. Uh, that's all part essentially of the engagement. You have to essentially figure those things out with the customers. Uh, the most important thing is that you have a sponsor up front that's okay, yeah, actually I believe in this technology, this is gonna get us to the next phase where the, where the customer wants to be, and there has to be value. Mm -hmm. If there's no value, uh, nothing is gonna happen. Right. Martin, what, uh, in terms of corporate strategy, what is the competitive advantage of Skytree? Oh, I think, uh, there, you know, there's the technology part, and uh, which is ultimately driven by the people. You know, I think the the people that we have uh, uh, in the company and how we started out and what we have right now uh, are ultimately the differentiation for us. So, our, our in our engineering department, we have about 92% PhD rate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a lot of the guys that created and invented those algorithms work for us, or so we work very closely with them. Mm -hmm. So, we are kind of in a way the the folks who, you know, did a lot of the machine learning that, that's out there today. So we came up with it. Mm -hmm. So in other words, uh, one, one of the big factors for us early on was essentially the, the people that we were involved with. Uh, uh, not just on the hiring side, but also partnerships. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we, have, we have a massive partnerships with the university networks out there. Mm -hmm. uh, in a way, Skytree, we are kind of the curators between academia and the industry. and we put a huge focus on hiring essentially the best in machine learning, and that's what we have done. So I would say, you know, if it's only one thing that's differentiated for us, it's the people uh, inside the company and the people that we work with uh, that allows us to, to build a, you know, an environment and a system that it's pretty hard to beat there in the marketplace. And what have been your learnings from working with the, those uh, university institutions? So I think it started out with us uh, uh, because we have a lot of <laughs> academics that started the company. So we were kind of like thrown into that already. So it was, was a natural fit for us. And I personally was very positively surprised because essentially uh, whatever you work with, you get at a very high level uh, right off the bat. So when, when, when we work with universities out there, we have very clear goals, very clear targets around the objectives they want to accomplish. And they're usually the thought leader in that space. So they are that university or that professor that came up with them saying we work with them. And that makes it a, uh, a very nice uh, partnership for mm -hmm. us, and uh, and at the same time, many times we recruit directly from those universities, uh, get get in their masters or PhD programs. That's great. In terms of market de development, can you give us a broad overview of how you perceive the current market development and predictive analytics? Yeah, I think uh, it's not just so much about predictive analytics; it's around big data and predictive analytics. So I would say. You know, big data certainly is, is at a certain hype level that, that is hard to, hard to beat at this point. Uh, it's definitely out there, people are using it, 
And but people are now looking to hey, what's the next thing after big data? So if you know if, if SaaS and cloud was maybe four or five years ago, big data is certainly happening now. And what's the next thing? So we believe machine learning, specifically predictive analytics, is going to be a huge part of that because that's the thing that allows us to gain insights and what we call actionable insights from the data. So you might have a data lake, a data hub, whatever it is. Now how do we get to the next level, which is the insights? So predictive analytics and machine learning is going to play a major role. To, to our point is where we believe in the next five years, every Fortune 500 is going to have a machine learning system at their disposal, whether it's in the cloud or on-premise, but they are going to use it because essentially it's the, the next logical thing after BI, business right. intelligence. So business intelligence has been around there for 25, 30 years. People want to go, what's the next thing? How do I go from looking at yesterday's data at predicting what's going to happen to our business tomorrow? And that's really machine learning, and that's where the journey is really going. And what would be your forecast? Would it be more that each and every company develops th their own kind of predictive analytical tools, or uh, is there so much of an uh, economy of scale when some service provider like you also uh, develops a tool and um, yeah, s sells it to all the other companies? So there will always be, be companies out there who want to do their own thing. There's nothing wrong with that, and, and open source is a great example of that. And if you look at Linux, um, you know, it's everywhere. People are using it, and it's a great success story. Um, however, there's also going to be a majority of the market that just wants to use the system. And a good analog to that would be a relational database. 25, 30 years ago, people asked, why do you need a database? Well, today, nobody would ask that. And while you can still build your own machine learning system yourself, potentially, most customers just say, hey, can I have a system that can do the same thing yeah. what these guys are doing? And we think that's, to your point, economies of scale. Uh, it's going to ultimately probably succeed in the market because it's just much easier to um, deploy, to manage, to use, and to support ultimately. So uh, that's where we, we see the market is going right now. What have been your major learnings and maybe uh, do's and don'ts that you have seen over the last years? There, there are a lot of things you, 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 know, you, you learn by, um, by, by failing. Uh, and maybe those are, those, are, those are the most painful lessons, but those are the most, most important ones. But a lot of the times is actually uh, working with the right people and um, kind of basically surround yourself with the smartest people that you could potentially uh, work with or have as advisors or mentors. I mean, that was, that was essentially from day one our, our, uh, our mantra basically to be out there working with uh, the people that we bring in, have them essentially be at a certain level and at the same time have advisors and a network of people that can support you and uh, ultimately surround yourself only with positive people. I mean that's that's something I've, I've learned over the years. You, you don't want to be with people that drag you down, you want to be with people that, that lift you up essentially and that's whether that's in life or in business, uh, it's ultimately the people who are positive who are probably going to uh, emerge as victors. Okay, great. And are there any specific learnings to machine learning or building big data companies? Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> there, are, there, there are certain things, you know, in, in hindsight, you could always say, oh, we should have done this, this, and that. Um, but, uh, you know, if I would have to do it again, I would say I wouldn't change that much. Uh, I would change the potential, the, the, the makeup of the, uh, of the product in certain industries that we, go, that we would go after. But those are all small details that you can basically learn uh, uh, while you're doing it, essentially. There's nothing that's a major, oh, wow, this was like a, a major... A, a major screw up essentially, but but the small things sometimes they, they do have a big impact. So, uh, but one of the things um, that, that that we have seen early on, and in hindsight we, we could have done a better job, is essentially be very specific and even more focused on certain industries and, and verticals and applications essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so that would essentially ultimately accelerate time to market and will get you a better product market fit essentially. So those are the things. Uh, in hindsight, yeah, we, we, we are fixing that, we are doing a better job now, but if you could do those things early on, uh, you probably are in a better position going forward, but it's nothing that, that, that you couldn't fix. Great. Martin, thank you very much for your time and your insights, and now we should get a beer here over because the Oktoberfest is coming. Thank you very much for watching us. Thanks. Okay, Super, good. Martin. Good job, yeah. Thank you. <laughs>